Hey, this is a little video going over something I've been obsessed with this month called Mapbox. Uh, Mapbox is a no-code tool for uh, putting maps on websites and it's really, really good. There's a ton of stuff you can do with it and I'm just going to scratch the surface today on integrating it with the Webflow CMS. I had an introduction to Mapbox almost, oh, when did I graduate college? About four years ago, when I was doing a intro to web design and development class in college, I was way over ambitious and wanted to do like a website that had a map with little places I liked in Nashville that had like a song attached to each of them. It was a, it was silly, but I was, did not know how to do a map uh, on a website yet, but found Mapbox. A lot of people opt for Google Maps when they want to integrate a map into a website, but Mapbox is a great alternative. It's got a really generous free plan. Um, there's just a little bit more finagling you have to do to figure out the interface, but I think it's really worth it, especially given that you are really able to style these maps the way you want. Um, whereas with Google, you're kind of set in the Google view of the maps. What I'm going to show you today is very much based off of a clonable and video that Corey Moen did, where he shows you how you can use a Webflow CMS collection and use that within Mapbox. So that was really helpful for me to get this set up. Uh, the main thing I kind of added there was this little side panel. Um, so I'm kind of go, going to go over how all of this works. I'm going to assume that you know like a little bit of JavaScript. So this is going to use a little bit of JavaScript, a little bit of jQuery, all kind of hacked together to make this. So this is going to be our final product here. As you can see, there's little dots over each of these locations. These are going to be state parks. This is just based off of, um, I'll show you in a minute, the Tennessee State Park website, uh, just grabbing locations, copy information from them. Uh, I was going to add more, but it was a lot of work to put all of this content in. So we're just doing five for now. There might be more by the time this is up. But what happens is when you click on it, it one zooms into that specific location and then brings up this little uh, just information panel on the side. And as you click to different ones, it changes to that specific location. Um, there's information like activities and links to um, their specific contact donate reservation. Um, and then when you click on this, it hides it. So yeah. And when you click on these, there's the little pop up here as well, telling you exactly where it is. So I'm going to start off by showing you Mapbox because Mapbox is how we do this. <laughs> So if you go to the Mapbox website, you'll notice that they have like a ton of things you can do. You can make like these kinds of maps, this kind where it's kind of modern. They've got a ton of different like terrain options. What I ended up using was this outdoors one and tweaking it a little bit. Uh, and then there's, there's even more you can do. Like you can do street view. You can do like um, calculate travel and distances, uh, a ton of really cool stuff. For now, I'm going to go to my account and show you my favorite part of this as a designer, which is the studio. Um, so if you go into Mapbox, you open up the studio and you can create a new style. Um, I'm going to show you the one I have right now, but if you click a new one, you can kind of like pick which style you want it to be. And these are like so fun and pretty. Look at this one. This one's pink. Whoa, you can see how pink my face is just because of how pink this screen is. That's weird. I can open up this style. So this is what I ended up using for the state park map. So I'll open that up and we have sort of the, I guess it would be the designer of the map. Uh, and in here, there's a ton of different stuff you can do over here. You can toggle on and off things like buildings, land. Uh, I've, I've turned off transit but you know, I could also turn off road networks and that would get rid of that. I could turn off land and water if I wanted to do that and just show you the roads. There's like a ton of different things you can do here. Included in this too is uh, changing things like the color. So I've changed the green space to this sort of dark green color. It's a little bit brighter when you first get started, but there's 3D stuff I don't even know how to do yet but a few things to like note in this view is down here 
It shows you the lat and long of where you currently are. These two numbers will show you the current latitude and longitude you currently are viewing at. And then this number here shows you the amount of which you're currently zoomed at. Uh, the last thing that we are going to look at in this view is the share panel. So this is how everything's going to move over to Webflow. You could just use an iframe if you're just showing the map, that kind of thing. But what we are interested in is, whoops, is clicking web in developer resources. And we're gonna use this style URL and our access token. Uh, so that's gonna come over into the Webflow project. So I'll go ahead and open up Webflow. So here in Webflow, it looks like I've got a, a big blank box, but that's just because the map isn't gonna render until we are on the published site. Uh, but wherever you want the map to be, we just need to give that an ID of map. So that's kind of how it's getting targeted. You'll notice when you first open this up, there's nothing embedded in here. That's just because we are using a class and then targeting, targeting that in the JavaScript. Um, in this clonable as well, if you open it up, you'll see that there is the locations map wrapper. And then you can't see it, um, even though it is is show. Uh, in order to style anything in there, you're going to go to the item and then you'll click is show here and that will show us all of our uh, different items. I also have it so that you can't scroll. I have this page as like an overflow none, um, but if you wanted to see the rest of them, you could just turn that on as well on the page wrapper. Another little secret of this panel is in each of these collection items, we also have the text for the pop-ups hidden. So on the map itself, we have this, which is the name in the city it's in. And then over here on the side, we also have just like everything that's in the pop-up. But this text is actually hidden within this item. And I'll show you what I mean. So within that item, we have a bunch of things, but the thing I wanna show you is this locations map card, which is set to hidden by default. But if I click display, you can see that the text in here is the text that matches what's in our pop-up. So in the code, it's actually grabbing these two items and putting that in the pop-up here. It's also grabbing one more thing in this item, and that is this HTML embed. If I open that up, you can see we've got an ID just to mark which is which, which is the uh, the URL there. And then we've also got an input for the latitude and the longitude. And that is being read in the JavaScript to tell us where to put those different dots. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is just the way the CMS is set up for this item. You could really put whatever you want into the CMS items here. The main thing that it has to have is the latitude and the longitude to be able to place it to the right location. And you will want to be pretty detailed with that and have it as exact as you can. Uh, but yes, I actually still have population here from Corey's Clonable. I never got rid of that. Oops. Oh, well. Cool. That's all great. Let's let's hop into the code ladies and gentlemen dun, 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 dun. don't be scared it's just code i'll say it once i'll say it again um a lot of this code is Corey's because i cloned this from him and then just added stuff but i'm gonna talk through all of it anyway we've got a few resources inside the head tag just to talk to mapbox and then in addition to that, we have a few styles, and these styles are for the tiny pop-ups that appear on the dots. So these guys, not the dots themselves, but the pop-up that appears uh, above it. So any changes to that would happen within these two style tags. Um, here is the fun stuff. So up here, I've just asked jQuery to make an appearance because I will need them for some stuff that I don't remember how to do in JavaScript natively, but I probably should. Anyway, that's why that is there. The first thing up top is to remove the is show tag on map wrapper. I usually have it while I'm working on it. So this is just mostly that I remembered to get it off when I publish for testing. Anyway, the rest of this is map box stuff. This is, it was uh, Corey's notes. Please make sure you, if you are gonna use this clonable that you replace it with your own 
token for your map. The next thing is setting a GeoJSON object that will hold all of our uh, locations. And then setting an array for those locations. And this is where we initialize the map right here. So we are telling Mapbox to make a new map. And this is the ID for the map wrapper. So that's why we named our big div uh, with an ID of map. That's how it's knowing where to go. The next thing is the style URL. So that is in our studio. If we hit share, that's this style URL right here. So you're going to copy that directly and put it right there. The next thing is the center. So that is wherever you want it to start. So that's those coordinates we were looking at here in the bottom left earlier. So you can kind of figure where you want it to go and then just copy those coordinates and put it in this center part. And the last thing is the zoom. Um, and that is what this number was over here. So I kind of wanted it a little more zoomed out. Um, and make sure you change this number in this piece and this. So this is a little nifty thing Corey did so that um, the zoom on mobile can be a little bit more zoomed out than the zoom on desktop. Um, so you can play around with that and see what fits your use case. One thing to note is anywhere you see map, like earlier, that's going to be a map box reference controls and things like that because we've created a map box object a lot of things after that are going to be map box specific controls from the map box uh, documentation next we're getting the cms items from our location list so the idea it's getting from there is our list here so not our wrapper but the list that we've put here so each of the nodes under this it's going to grab them so this function get geodata is getting each of those locations under list locations and then grabbing this information from each of them. So getting the lat long value, getting the HTML that's in our pop up there, putting the lat long into an array of coordinates, getting the location ID value. And then the last thing I've added in here is a way to target the divs to come out is putting an array ID on each of these, uh, which I use later to bring those cards out. Then we put that all into a little GeoJSON object. We invoke that function and once that is invoked, we can add all of our map points. It's important to note that if you want to change these little dots, this is, this is where you're going to do it. It's within the actual JavaScript itself. Um, so we have it as type circle. That's what all our dots are going to be. And we define the uh, color radius and all that stuff in here in the add map points function. And this is where the magic happens. Basically, we're getting the coordinates, the description. We are making sure that um, we can zoom out to another dot and then setting that pop-up where we want it to be. So this piece of code right here is what's actually adding our pop-up to the map when we click on a new one. And by pop-up, I mean this little piece, not this one. So that's what add pop-up is doing. And then map on click is actually the act of clicking it. So what I have adjusted in here is grabbing the ID of the specific CMS item we're clicking. So earlier we added IDs to all of them. So this one is getting that specific one. It's adding the pop-up and then a few more things. We're using jQuery to add a class of is show to our map wrapper, which is just pulling it out and giving it a little slide action. And then we are checking if any items are currently there and if there are we're going to remove them and we're going to replace them with the correct one for the correct id so basically here it's a combo of adding the pop-up and then adding the collection item div on the side could i have combined all of this into fun to one function uh maybe but i couldn't figure it out this is some fun stuff you can do in map box to fly over to where the one you clicked on is centered um, this makes sure that it's a pointer when you hover over it and it's not when it's not. And then this is what is loading it and adding it all in. 
Um, this is another thing to make sure that you can close the side navs with that little button. And then I got stuck for a while because I wanted it where like you could hover over. I don't know how I made it like turny turny turn. Oh, I guess this way. For the map, I wanted it where if you hover over, it'll show you the things. And if there's ever stuff like that you're looking to do, Mapbox has really great documentation to show you how, and I'll show you where it is. So if you're on the Mapbox website and you go developers and then you go to maps, and then you go to Mapbox GLJS, which is what we're using right now, this has a ton of stuff that's really helpful all on its own, but one thing I did was go to examples, and this is great. This is extremely helpful. Full screen control, adding lines, adding a marker, using a place name, adding a pattern. Uh, so all this really cool stuff you can figure out how to do. And tutorials are super helpful as well. So I think I had just grabbed some code from one of these that had like a hover function and I just threw it in here. Um, I've played around to try and condense this, but I am not quite a good enough JavaScript developer yet to do that. So that's, it's a little messy, but it is what it is. And I think it looks pretty good, you know, like this, if I added a few more dots, it really looks like a cool map that you can learn a lot from. Um, as I said before, this is all from the Tennessee State Parks website. Tennessee has its own cool uh, website where you can see all of the state parks here. Um, the next one I'll probably add before this goes live. That's Henry Horton. I'm looking for Foster. Is Foster Falls even on here? Apparently it's a part of South Cumberland, but I really like Foster Falls. The thing this map has that I would like to figure out how to do within Mapbox is add filters. I know you can do it. I just don't know how I would do it within Webflow yet. So if anybody wants to tackle that, let me know. But that's it. That's the map. I think it's fun. Uh, feel free to clone it, play around with it. I hope that made sense. <laughs> if you have any ideas for this or any uh, questions about how it's built or things you want to change, um, I'll do my best to let you know uh, if I have any answers. Um, but this was super fun to make. I love maps. I did a really basic one for this, but as you can see from like examples here, you can do some really, really funky ones that are really fun. Um, so I encourage you to, to get after it. Maps are so fun and a great way to like interact with the real world, um, which is something that doesn't always happen on the internet. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. The end. I never know how to end these. Goodbye. <laughs>